Welcome to Electron Online and here's our third example of how to figure out what the exiting beam direction will be when we have an incident beam of light upon two plane mirrors. In this case, the two plane mirrors do not make an, an angle of 90 degrees. In this case, it's actually an angle of 100 degrees. 90 plus an additional 10 because this mirror is 10 to 10 tilted 10 degrees to the left like that. So what will be the direction of the exiting beam? Well, we do it one step at a time. First of all, we want to know what the incident angle is, and of course, that's always relative to the perpendicular or the, yeah, the perpendicular of the, uh, of the plane of the mirror. So here's the perpendicular line, and here we have the angle of 45 degrees relative to the perpendicular, because we know that the two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. This is the incident angle, which means the reflected angle will also be 45 degrees, like this. So this is a 45 degree angle. Now the question is, what will be the incident angle over here when we hit this mirror? Again, we draw the perpendicular to the mirror, which of course is not equal to the perpendicular that it would be if the mirror was perfectly vertical. The reason why I put both lines there is because it will help us figure out the direction of the final, the final beam at the end here. Okay, so the beam is reflected back from the first mirror, hits this mirror. First, we want to know what this angle is right here. Okay, we can figure that out by knowing that this angle here must be 45 degrees because the two should add up to 90 degrees. Now this angle here, instead of 90, is another 10 degrees or 100 degree angle over here, which means that this angle right here is 180 degrees minus the 100 degrees of that angle minus the 45 degrees of that angle because three angles in a triangle always must add up to 180 degrees. So that's 80 minus 45 or a 35 degree angle. So this here is a 35 degree angle, which means that this angle, which is the angle of incidence relative to the normal, relative to the perpendicular line to the mirror. Okay, we know that this total angle must be 90 degrees. We subtract 35 from that, that would be 60, well, 90 minus 30, 60, 55 degree angle. So the angle of incidence here is a 55 degree angle, which means that the angle of, of um, reflection must also be 55 degrees. So this angle here must also be 55 degrees because the angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. And so finally, how do we express the final direction of this exiting beam? Well, we know that it's 55 degrees above the normal. And we know the normal is still the 10 degrees above the horizontal line. So when we add these two together, we can then say that the direction of the final beam is 65 degrees above the, the horizontal. So 65 degrees above the horizontal. All right, again, let's go through it. We have a, a beam coming in at a 45 degree angle relative to the, to the horizontal. That means that this angle, the incident angle, must be 45 degrees relative to the normal, which means the reflected angle must be 45 degrees. Now, figuring out what the angle of incidence is on the second mirror, we first find this, this uh, angle right in here. We know that the three angles must add up to 180 degrees. We subtract the two other angles, 45 degrees for this one and 100 degrees for that one because it's 90 plus 10, 100 degrees, which is 35 degrees. That means this angle here must be 35, which means the other angle, since the two must add up to 90, must be 55 degree angle. That is therefore the incident angle to the second mirror because that's the angle relative to the normal of the mirror, which is still the 10 degrees above the horizontal, 55 degrees, which means the reflected angle must be 55 degrees. And since the, re the reflected angle is relative to the normal, which is 10 degrees above the horizontal line, the angle relative to the horizontal line must be 55 plus 10, or 65 degrees, and that's the final direction of the exit and beam. And that's how we do that.